the heavily rumored Max Struess deal has gotten done, so let's go into the details. This is a three-team deal between the Miami Heat, Cleveland Cavaliers, and San Antonio Spurs, who are the third team to jump in on this. The Cavs get Max Struess, who was signed to a four-year, $63 total million dollar deal, so about $16 million per year, which is heavily aligned with what the rumors were for him. The Miami Heat get the Lakers 2026 second round pick and the Spurs get Chetty Osman, Lamar Stevens and the Cavs 2030 second round pick. Uh, now those pick details I did get from hoopsrumors.com. Maybe not the most reputable source, but they were the only one to provide any details on those second round picks. So if I get if I get those wrong, I guess I just read fake news. But I do feel like those second round picks aren't as important as the players involved. So first of all, best of luck to Chetty Osman and Lamar Stevens. Osman being the longest tenured Cavalier before this trade. He was the last remnant of the returning LeBron era Cavs. So a lot of a lot of good nostalgia and memories being traded away there, but uh, for what he brought on the court, a bench player who did put in some solid minutes. You might, maybe some Cavs fans wanted to get him uh, a little bit more time. We might have wanted to see Bickerstaff maybe not have him in the doghouse as much, but definitely a player that you can afford to lose. But the memories that come attached with him maybe be a, might be a bit difficult to to get past. And Lamar Stevens did have a pretty. I think he had an unexpectedly large positive impact last regular season. Didn't really see the floor much in the playoffs against the Knicks, but he did provide a spark to the team when he needed to. And I think Okoro was hurt, and Lamar Stevens definitely stepped up into that starting small forward role very well in his time. Uh, but he was traded out as well. And for the Cavs, they get Max Struess. So let's get into his numbers a little bit. Last year, he averaged 28 minutes per game, 11.5 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists per game as well. He shot 35% from 3, 41% overall, and about 87.5% from the free throw line. Now, those numbers did dip a bit in the postseason with the exception of the minutes per game. He still had 28 minutes per game, but... The scoring and the shooting percentages, those all went down. It, it couldn't have helped that he had a pretty bad series in the NBA Finals. Couldn't really be trusted. A lot of times it felt like he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn in that series with maybe the exception of Game 2. Uh, but the Cavs, they made this move to help increase the shooting threats off the bench. And honestly, if we were relying on Max Struess in the NBA Finals, my first thought would be, Wow, the Cavs made the NBA Finals. That's that's great. We had must have had an amazing season. So I guess I, if, if he has troubles in the Finals again, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, but Max Drews definitely does help increase the shooting threats off of the bench. I think the Cavs think their starting five is set for this year. I think they're going to, once again, they're going to roll with Garland, Mitchell, Okoro, uh, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. I feel like those got they the Cavs definitely feel like they have their starting five roster set, and they their work in free agency is going to be to kind of uh, trim up the edges a little bit. Maybe they go to pursue a backup center next because Robin Lopez wasn't really getting it done. I know you can move Mobley over to center and, and sub in a, a power forward there, but you know you, you can't have Robin Lopez being your your center off the bench and expect to have any sort of success with that. Robin Lopez, for a lot of the games, J.B. Bickerstaff just refused to play him because his minutes were so unproductive and bad. And look, Robin Lopez seems like a funny, cool guy. I liked when he was uh, riffing with the re referee about his brother being an actor and all that. That was funny stuff, but yeah, you definitely don't want him to uh, eat up any, you know, you don't want him to eat many big minutes on the court. That's just a, a recipe for disaster. And I do think overall this, the moves that the Cavs have made do help their, their bench shooting threats. You got, you got Georges Niang yesterday and uh, neither of these moves for me really move the needle in terms of my excitement, but I do think that they are uh, shoring up their bench. You know, the, these moves aren't the Donovan Mitchell impact trade by, by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, they kept, they keep, Karis LeVert around. Lamar Stevens was really just a carbon copy of what Isaac Okoro does just in the second unit. And Chetty Osman, again, maybe not a trail maybe not a player that you want to lose, but if the Cavs feel like they can upgrade with Max Struess, then I guess that's the th that's the sacrifice you have to make, I suppose. This does shore up the bench. It does improve them in that way. But if the if these are the players that the Cavs are getting that they're going to have to rely on heavily, I'm not sure how much changes. But you know the, the Cavs really did need a revamped bench. It is something that we saw was an issue later in the season, especially in that playoff series against the Knicks, where the Knicks, you know, the, their bench and their depth just embarrassed the Cavs bench. So hopefully the, the, the revamped 
bench players for the Cavs this season help go, you know, they go a long way to shoring up the depth of this team. Maybe if Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell aren't having the best games and Jared Allen isn't, you know, maybe he, if he's a no show kind of like he was in the latter half of that, of that first round series, I'm not saying trade him like some other, some other people in on, in the Cavs fan base are, but if some of those guys aren't showing up, maybe a guy like Georges Niang or Max Struess does step up and help to replace that scoring that is lost when some of those guys aren't, you know, going at their full motor. So hopefully the Cavs bench is short up a little bit. That's going to be it for this one. Thank you for watching this far. If you made it into it, you know, it's to the end of the video. Leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you would like to see more like it. I will see you at the next one.